Hey guys, welcome to the Shin Zone and this is Shinique and today I have a special guest with me and his name is Pomza and uh, he's currently in Zambia. Hi, hi Pomza, how are you? I'm alright, how are you? I'm good. So we're here to talk about um, your experience with when you thought you had coronavirus. Also, what is currently going on in your country? Okay, um, first of all, uh, for those people who don't know where Zambia is, it's uh, in Africa, that's the southern part of Africa, that's where right. Zambia is, I, I know it's not a very famous country. Um, that is true. I don't know. <laughs> uh, uh, well, I visited Japan, yeah, I came to Japan, but I had to get back home because of the same um, COVID-19. And then the policy by then was that um, it is still the same policy, but uh, things are more strict now. It was that when you get back from any COVID uh, foreign country, uh, you have to, to be self uh, isolation for 14 days. Um, so, Japan being one of those countries where there was the virus, um, I had to go into self quarantine. So I had to be alone for, for 14 days. Oh, when I left Japan, I think that was um, early March. That's when I left Japan. Okay. So I was in the city of, um, I was in Kitakishu and then I went to Nagasaki. Okay. Uh, I passed through Tokyo because that's one of the connections that we're using in the very of Africa. And so that's, that's when I came back. That was some about two months ago now, right? Three, two months ago. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. This is me. Yeah. So you were saying to me that um, at one point you thought you had coronavirus. Why? I think basically it was just overthinking. Overthinking. You know, when I came, yeah, I think it was just overthinking. When I came from, from Japan, um, like I said, I was alone, and by then, a lot of information was passing through social, um, Facebook, WhatsApp, social media, and it was, it was active. There was so much stress, so much worry in their life. And um, yeah, the, the signs that they give, the symptoms of COVID-19 are that you feel fatigued, um, maybe you have got temperatures and headaches. Now, the funny thing is this, because of changing temperatures in Japan by then, I don't know how it is, by then it was extremely cold. Right. So when I came, back, yeah, when I came back home, I found that it was extremely cold. So because of the change in temperature, oh. um, yeah, I, I had that fatigue in my body and uh, started having headaches. Headaches were contributed by overthinking as well. The other thing is that because of having too much jet lag, I was feeling so fatigued as well. So that contributed, and I was getting a bit worried. <laughs> yeah. So when you were leaving Japan, did you get any testing done from Japan? Like, did they require mm -hmm. you to do any testing before you leaving the country just in case you had it? Basically, they just checked our temperatures. Just oh. checked our temperature. I mean, we just uh, checked our temperature. And um, the other thing is that when I came back home recently, when I say recently, I got tested. I did a proper testing at home, they're doing mass testing, uh, and I'm negative so far. What I did is that I called our, um, uh, the COVID center in our country and explained to them the situation, but they told me, no, 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 what you're experiencing sounds normal, there's nothing to worry about, because my temperature was constant, I kept on checking my temperature, and my temperature was, was normal throughout the time. It was usually just at 6.5 most of the time, the six point five. So they said, no, you see, you, you, you're okay. But once you finish your, your, your days of self-isolation, of course. So that's what I did. I, I, after I finished them, I went back to work, I called them, and um, they cleared me and said, no, no, you're okay. They go back to work and yeah. Okay, so after that, why did you actually do the test? Um, just to be safe, you know, people say that uh, you might have it without knowing, without showing any symptoms, you might fit. And basically, I myself, I, 
I, I do a lot of exercise which you know so I was yeah. like ah, the immune system will be okay and I might have it but just to be safe and to be sure then people are going to be tested and um, in our country they are they're doing, they're doing massive uh, testing in areas which have grown suspected uh, danger zone from and they're just calling the community to come and be tested actually oh. our president is doing a very good job uh, Wow, yes. <laughs> wow, that's good. So could you please tell me about your experience with doing the test, like step-by-step -step procedure, because I heard that it's very scary and it's very uncomfortable. Is that really true? Um, scary, no. Uncomfortable, yes. Um, the swiping is, is, I don't know how I can explain it. It's just something else. It's an, very, very uncomfortable thing. Uh, tears started coming up from my eyes. <laughs> I was not crying, but tears came out. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. the thing is in your nose and everything, you taste like you're doing it at home, which is just something. But it doesn't take long. Just like maybe five minutes or so to get your testing. Then you're told, okay, we'll call you for your results. If they don't call you, then you're okay. And they have not called me. They gave me a time period saying, if you don't receive any call from us this time, it will be very fine. And so that time period has passed, it has been over a week now, and I've not received any call from them. Oh, that's a, okay. So, you know, yeah. wow, interesting. But so you said that they put something in your nose? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Could you explain? <laughs> I don't want to make it scary, but I don't know how they do it in other countries, but uh, yeah, that's what they're doing. It's like um, a swab. swab. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You to put in your nose, way up your nostril, like in both of them. They push the swab in both nostrils? Yeah. Why? I thought it was just like one. I, I, I honestly don't know. Oh. Yeah, I, I honestly don't know why they do that. to be safe, but not, I, I honestly don't know why they do it. I would be screaming like uh -uh. Yeah, that is a no no for me. <laughs> no, no. Because mm -mm. I, I think that's the same procedure that they are doing worldwide, and uh, but based on images that I've seen, uh, it looks quite uncomfortable. I wouldn't want to do that. Uncomfortable. It is. That I can assure you, but it's worth it so that you are sure and you know your status, uh, your, 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 your status of this uh, disease. It is, it is very uncomfortable, but it's absolutely necessary. Yes, I, I, I guess that. Mm -hmm. The peace of mind. Yes, that is true. Another question, did you pay for it or is subsidized by the government? It was actually free. Really? Well, yeah, in Japan, exactly. you have to pay for it. You can't use the insurance, but you have to pay for it. So. Oh, no, it was absolutely free for us. Like I said, our government is, is trying to do its best. But sadly, the numbers are going up. Because of massive testing, <laughs> the numbers are going up. They are going up right now. So yeah. are there any deaths in the country? Really yes, the, yeah. Covid related death. We have about seven now. Oh, okay. Wow. Uh, are there like near your community? Um. Yeah, they're in our state. They are called provinces, but I'm sure in Japan you call them as states. Yeah. They they are near. Uh, they're in the province, but not near where I'm staying. Actually, they don't reveal them that much. Some of them, others are in other states or provinces. So currently, what is your situation? Like, do you guys get to work from home or you have to go to work the same way? So the, the current situation in Zambia is right now is that, um, first of all, we usually have um, our president updates us every two weeks to tell us on measures that the government will take. But we have daily updates of the numbers and they're by the health minister. So, um, as of now, first of all, is that um, we have 200 and... 200! <laughs> yeah, the, the, the highest record we had in a single day was um, 
so far was yesterday when they announced that we have about uh, how many was there? 70, 72 new cases. Really? Yeah, 70 something. I can't really remember, but it was the highest yesterday because of uh, one border town. So the, as of tomorrow, they're going to close that border town and they're going to uh, restrict it and do massive. They're going to say new epicenter from the capital city now. Um, now, answering your question that you asked is that uh, we, we, the way the, the, the government has structured the essential and non essential workers, I'm sure that's everywhere. <laughs> yeah, that, 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 that's a term that is common. <laughs> Yeah, so for, for the private sector, they're able to, uh, most of the private sectors, what they have done is that they have told the workers to be waiting for from home. But for the government, I work for the government, um, they have, we have essential workers and non-essential workers. For those essential workers that are going to work and just wait. Then there are those, I don't know whether they call them semi-essential or not, but there's rotation. So you, you get to work some few, some few days at home, you work from home, then some few days you get to work from, from your workplace. Yeah, oh, that's really? how that's how we it. So which category are you in? Um I'm the one who's retired. I mean that category where they're rotating. So I did my, my, my days of waking. So coming to starting tomorrow, I'll start waking from home. But you can be called to wake anytime. Um I think a month ago there were some few uh measures that the government took our president. Some of the measures that he took was that he that closed some schools. No, they closed all the schools and universities. They closed um, gyms, uh, restaurants were operating on the takeaway places. There was no worship, not going to change in any form of worship. Um, as of two weeks ago, they restricted those measures a bit. What they did is that they, they, they allowed churches to start meeting but with a lot of restrictive measures like you have to be satisfied and even having function like you know, but bars clubs and everything was closed as of yesterday no the day before yesterday as of the day before yesterday we had another uh, address presidential address in which he relaxed some measures saying examination classes will be open as uh, starting next month examination classes will open then they were saying that the gyms, casinos were also open. Um, I don't know whether that's a good idea or not. The uh, gyms yeah. and the casinos. Really? <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Bars are closed. <laughs> All bars are closed. Mm -hmm. Maybe people be find the, the alcohol from the casinos or something. But restaurants have gone back to their usual working. Uh, the usual waking uh, and cinemas have been open as well. But the catchphrase is that you have to follow the healthy um, prescribed uh, regulations. That includes wearing masks, right? I should think so. And you have to see that there's social distancing. You have to have a way to wash your hands, we have to have sanitizers around. Yeah, wearing a mask now is mandatory. Like you have to wear a mask. It's a mask. Oh. But um, others try to do it. Others, you know, not everybody can follow what people are saying. Right. Uh, so that, that's what currently the situation in our country. In Japan, uh, we recently got to work from home, but some prefectures like mine in Nagasaki, we have to go back to work on Monday tomorrow right so some schools what are they doing is like they're splitting the classes in half so half of the class comes on a specific day while the other half comes on the next day so the teachers now have to like teach in the same lesson twice as much as they would normally do here in some prefectures they're not doing online learning so they have to open back school in this case uh -huh. You know, I think Japan is just a children's country, you know? Everybody's panicking there. Japan is just, I don't know, they're children with these. Yes. Uh, these. I <laughs> they're very chill. <laughs> they're very chill, yes. It's scary. 
yeah, yes, yeah, it can be a little bit scary to know that a country is like chill about such thing, this pandemic that's going on. But I guess that's their thing. Um, recently, the government said that they're going to issue a mask, and they started in some places, including Tokyo, and I got one of them. And then, like a couple of days after that, there was an article that came out that the masks are infected. They have like hair and the, um, insects in some of the masks. So they had to recollect the ones that weren't distributed to the public as yet. But I'm actually glad that your country is doing something about it. Yeah, they are. I think um, they're trying to balance the economical uh, aspect of the country and the right. disease. Because one way or another, if you were to lock down fully the country, you find that um, economic as we, your economy will tremble, like it, it will go down, and it will be very hard to recover. Like Zambia is a developing uh, nation, so it would be very hard. So they're trying to balance up, do as much as they could, but at the same time, try to leave some economic activities open. Right. But, but- and that's what most countries are doing also there because the last thing you want is the economy to crash because that's like another pandemic itself <laughs> but um i guess japan was also doing the same like prior before the olympic was postponed because they the numbers weren't that high and then all of a sudden the numbers just increased all yeah. of the- yeah, the, the Olympics were the hit, you guys were testing was a hassle to be tested in Japan before right. the Olympics. Yeah, right. That's what I was hearing. And it doesn't look good, especially a lot of countries were looking at Japan at that time and was wondering what is really going on. When you were traveling back home to Zambia, how was that? Um, Actually, by the time I was coming back home, things were not as intensive as it is now around the world. But there were fewer people in airports. For example, I'd find that I'm, I'm alone on a three-seater seat in the plane. And um, the airport in Tokyo, you find that it is in Narita Airport. Yeah, Narita Airport. You find there were very few people there. Even in Dubai, when I was in Dubai, when I was in Dubai it was... Um, it was not that a lot of people. And, you know, I, it used to look strange because I was wearing a, a mask most of the time. And people look at me thinking, I used to look unique, you know. <laughs> and I was shocked. I was looking at these people saying, come on, I don't see that this thing is serious. But, yeah, most of the time you find that very few people are putting on masks. And um, when I came back in the country, by then we didn't record in any case in the country. So, oh, wow. Um, I remember when I was after the after I finished the, the self isolation, I you know I was trying to put on the mask, trying to stay fresh. Some people would be shocked, saying, "Why is this guy?" Putting on? I used to look unique, and sometimes I feel ashamed. Like yeah, I'm taking things too serious. But um, yeah, now things have changed. The other experience that I had so far in Japan is um, uh, segregation, people being scared of me, thinking that maybe I might have to put. Now, even after passing, being told, no, you're okay, you can go back. Uh, people still have that mentality. If you tell them I'm coming back to Japan, people will be like, ah, just stay a bit away from me for some time and all of that. Um, <laughs> actually, in my witness, some of them were like that. You find that you're looking in the corridor, she's one lady. Yeah, I think she's pregnant, yeah. She was to see me in the corridor. From afar, she would I had to sit wow. down, try to educate her, and tell her, no, no, listen, I can't come back to work and be sick. I did this and this. I followed all the procedures. She right. was very sick. Right. Actually, like you get it from someone else and not me. That's what I told her. Wow. And luckily, you you weren't the one who actually carried the virus, right? So, wait. So how did the virus actually come to the country? What happened is that... Um, the government increased the uh, surveillance, the screening at the airport. Um, so there was this couple that came from France. They came from a holiday from France during this time. COVID, no one understood. And people are like, come on, you can go to a holiday in this situation. Anyway, so they came from there. 
the the wife showed symptoms and uh, signs of having uh, COVID-19. So they were isolated, the entire family, and they saw the husband and the wife had the disease, but the, the children didn't have it. So those were the case zero, if you put it that way. Those were the first recorded cases. Then um, the cases went up because there were people traveled to, they went to a certain country. I think it was during the time of prayers or something, I'm not too sure. So when people started coming back from there, that's when a lot of them had that disease. So it showed up, and from there we started having contact, contact and uh, these truck drivers who go from border to border, some of them they were uh, uh, diagnosed with the disease. And um, the recent like shooting up is the same, uh, same one that we have had in this border town where the cases are extreme. So the government has really focused its resources on this border town, which is causing us. It's a new epicenter that we have in now. So what, what would you tell people like now who are still traveling? Because some people have to travel because of their jobs and so forth. And uh, um, people who are like working from home. Because some people are saying that, oh my gosh, I'm so bored right now. You know, what do you do to like keep active working from home? Now, first of all, for those people who are saying, I'm so bored of working from home, what, what I can tell them is it's better to be bored and alive working at home than to be dead in the grave because you've been moving about. That's the best yeah. thing. So keep yourself busy with anything. We have, you can, if you meet someone, you can call them, you can video chat with them. Yeah, right. But the best thing is just try as much as possible to keep yourself busy and keep yourself safe from this disease because it's it's quite dangerous, especially to those people who are like um, those with a compromised immune system. So just to be safe. For those people who travel because they are really essential workers and they need to travel to try to make the economy run, it's just by all means keep safe. Keep safe and even as you are traveling when you go back to your home. Make sure that you stay away from your family until you maybe you are self isolated for a period of time. So that you keep your family safe, those that you love. Right. Because it's all depends with yourself and keep them safe. Right. And one last thing okay. is that avoid uh, getting the uh, information or news from the social media that will really make you distressed. Get official information that is authentic. Don't spread any right. Mm. That's a very good point because a lot of information is going all over the place and letting people live in fear, and it's just terrifying. Like you, people are doing all kind of stuff. The other day, <laughs> the other day, um, in America, the president mentioned something about disinfectant, and all of a sudden, everybody calling the health center asking if they should intake bleach and so forth why would you think that you know even by just doing simple research online will give you the the correct answer people need to do the necessary research and so forth before actually doing certain things or taking mm -hmm. certain medications nowadays it's meeting you again and uh, thank you for coming on my show and uh, i will see you next time all right bye. Bye. bye please like and subscribe to my channel until next time